Welcome to the Cyrus community. This is business unusual. Last time, Charles and Susan highlighted the power of being truly sent and the authority that comes with it. Today, we dive deeper into Jesus' great commission in Matthew 28, 18, 20 as our guide for being sent. We'll focus on what it means to go and make disciples, emphasizing that making disciples is a continuous process. We'll also explore the true meaning of nations as cultural groups, not just countries. Then, we'll discuss baptizing as a transformative act beyond water rituals and what it means to act in the name under God's authority. Finally, we'll reflect on Jesus' promise to be with us as we fulfill this mission. Join us as we break this down and understand our role in transforming nations. We continue the conversation on prophetic alignment 2024 and beyond. And we always that when we bring our conversations to you, yes. our aim is to make sure that somebody, number one, goes back to their father. That is the one thing we always encourage that you must hear from God. That even though God will allocate or say that the voice of God to you will come through a man, that's why he gave the fivefold. But you as a person, you must have a relationship with God. And that relationship, the first thing it does is makes you know that you can hear his voice. Once you hear his voice, the next thing is to do yes. what he says. And I think it's important to note that a relationship with God is not parking, sitting somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now we are relating. Yes. Now I'm close to God. Yes. No. A relationship with God is expressed in the instructions you heard from him. Mm. That's why Jesus said, I do what I see my father do. See, there's a doing yes. always involved. But the doing is connected to the father. So whenever we say our primary thing is to get you back to the father, it means doing without that is a problem. So you're saying that when we tell you that we will go back to the father, yes. we will know you have gone because what you're doing exactly. is what you have seen. Exactly. And what you're doing will have results or manifestations that cannot be explained through the yes. five senses. Yes. You go beyond. So when you talk about you've gone back to your father, yes. the one thing we want to see is doing. Doing. The <laughs> minute doing. Adam came mm. on the scene, he was doing. Yes, powerful. The minute God appeared on the scene, he was doing. Mm. So being with the Father is being like him. So when you talk about prophetic alignment 2024 and beyond, yes. you can't say you are aligned yep. by just sitting and reading the word and you're fasting and you're doing what we call the churchy activities, yes. but you have nothing that you're engaged in. Meaning in the earth, God intended you to do something. So in yes. TCC, the one message we have is that we all must be found doing something. Occupy till I come. That's a principle. <laughs> we've been talking That's about the saint ones. Yes. And we've been talking about Luke chapter 10 verse 2 yes. where we said the Lord of the harvest send workers so that they may come because the harvest is ready. Yes. But the workers are not there. So pray to the So pray to the Lord of the harvest so that he may send his workers. Now when we talk about the workers and they are sent. Yes. And they equip the harvest where is the next stop? Now, <laughs> everything has an objective, right? There's an outcome. From the beginning, there's always an outcome. There's, the thing about the scriptures, you'll discover that the scripture is measured in speakings and outcomes. Mm -hmm. Right through. Yes. So even scent must have an outcome. And today we want to really talk about what is the model? What directive did Jesus give himself? Mm. If sent is the model we are using. Yes. If he said that pray for the Lord of the harvest to send the people into the harvest, there must be a processing and a model. In the last conversation, we said that the harvest is not useful as harvest. Mm. Mm. The harvest must be converted into something. Yes. And that is the thing you are looking for. Mm. No farmer is looking to look at his fields and say, I have a harvest. Okay. He's happy with that. No, no. That harvest is going to change, affect, impact lives of people. Mm. And that is why it exists in the first place. So whenever we are sent into the harvest, there are two dynamics that will keep changing as we talk. Yeah. There's a dynamic of a sent one. There's a dynamic of the harvest. But at a certain point, that harvest also becomes a sent one. Mm. Until where we'll finish today, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord covers the earth mm. as the waters cover the sea. So I'll we'll say again that there's the workers who are yes. sent by the Lord yes. to equip the harvest. Yes. But this harvest yes. is supposed to be sent. Exactly. They go to the market space exactly. as as a sent to ones. function. So okay. the ascending is different. Let mm. me say this. Mm -hmm. The sending of the sent one is to activate the harvest. Okay. 
The sending of the harvest is to function. All right. There is to activate yes. and to function. The mistake we make is when the harvest tries to also make... Or to activate or some Or to, to activate. So you find that you've been sent to be, mm. instead you're preaching. Mm. So instead of functioning as you are sent, you are saying what the sent one sent to you to mm. others. You are an echo now. So you're supposed to function. Yes. You're supposed to manifest. Yes. You're supposed to bring a solution exactly. that men and women in yes. your environment, your jurisdiction, can say, surely we have met God because... Exactly. Heaven has sent us an answer through someone. There you go. Not through angels. No, yes. Okay. This is the principle. Okay. So today we are going to look at what we want to call the template that Jesus gave. Mm. A template that would affect every future sending. Mm. If you understand this template, yes. you'll be able to understand how sending works. And if you are a sent one, you will know what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. If you have been sent, you will know how to function. Mm. You get the difference? Of course, that is... <laughs> important to be aware of the term marketplace because yes. that's what we've been talking about. Yes. We've been saying marketplace, yeah. market space, and of course we've been, been tracking. Yes. You know that in this season, God is calling you to your market space. Yes. Though we are saying there's a marketplace, mm -hmm. when you walk into that place, yes. you find your space. Yes. So it's, a, it's good to be aware yes. that when you are being sent, yeah. there's a word we've been talking about, we've been, and today we'll go through that yes. because we've been talking about the marketplace and maybe yes. somebody's wondering, yes. fine, here I am as the harvest. Yes. Tell me how what to harvest the marketplace. marketplace. So I need us to understand together. that in the context of scripture, yeah. we, are, we, we created a term, marketplace, market space is not in the Bible. Yes. It is the definition we are using in the times we are living in, mm -hmm. but it's also a definition that has had different meanings for generations. Okay. All right? So on a most basic level, think of it as a wider concept, not just a trading center. In the days when Paul was in Ephesus, mm -hmm. Ephesus globally was what was called the, the trading point, the crossroads of all commercial trade around the world. Mm. Something called the Silk Road from China came through there. Okay. All traders and merchants passed through there. It was the central functional place. Mm. So at that time, that would be called the marketplace. marketplace but yes. our only traders found there, no. Mm. We found mm. many dynamics, and those dynamics include politics, include economy include culture, include spiritual. That's why Paul could go into a temple there and say to an unknown God. Mm. Yet it's a marketplace. So you're saying market space is not limited yes. to a trading center? No. It's a concept okay. that shows where, the best way to put it is in the world, where interaction comes is what you call the marketplace. All right. So wherever we function in the earth, and it's funny that the world technically Everywhere you think of the world, think of the four dimensions, north, south, east, west. Okay. Four is always a number in the scripture of the world. That's why there are east winds, north winds, north gate. We, that's a principle. Yes. That's a, talk about the world. But in that world, there are functional worlds or okay. smaller pieces of the bigger one. These areas cover politics. Mm -hmm. They cover economy. They cover culture. They cover spirituality. What I've just said you can hardly find yourself outside of it. So let's go back. You said there are four corners. Yes. And when you talk about the north, east, west, and south, yes. we are simply saying these four corners represent in our yes. mind, form and function, yes. the world. Okay. Yes. But when you say the world, north, east, south, yes. inside of that, yes. you'll find politics, Correct. economy, yes. culture, yes. And, spirituality. and spirituality. So of whatever type. These are the, prim I would call this the primary functionalities that govern life. Mm. Okay? Yes. No matter where you go, your life is going to be affected by one of these. Mm. Mm. By politics, who is in charge? Who is ruling? Who is in charge of your nation? Whether it's a king, whether it's a, a president, whether it's a dictator, it does not matter. It will affect your life. Mm. How is the economy governed? How are the financial structures operational in that space? Yes. How do people do finance, economy? And economy means everything. It means from family yes. to, to commercial to governance, to everything. Then culture. How do you operate? What is the mm -hmm. function? Of, what are the value systems? Mm -hmm. What are the beliefs? What are the, the things that matter? Mm -hmm. What are the decisions? What are the traditions that are carried out in that space? Yes. And then spirituality. What do they believe in? Mm -hmm. Do they believe in God? Do they believe in gods? Do they believe in which? Whatever. Mm -hmm. These are the four dynamics. Whenever we use the term world, mm -hmm. from now on, or marketplace, from now on, Please understand we're talking about these spheres. 
Why is that important? Because if you understand those fears, then you'll understand sending. Mm -hmm. okay. So people are sent to different dynamics. So people are sent into politics, some into economy, yes. some into culture, some into spirituality. Yes. To do what? To make sure every dimension becomes the kingdom of God. Mm. Of course, when you talk about the context that Jesus was referring to, yes. it's like what you call the Great Commission. There we all go. know the Great there Commission. So everybody talks about, you know, Jesus yes. talks about, you know, there's this, the Great Commission, Matthew yes. 28, every believer knows that. Yes. So you're saying, when Jesus says, go ye into all the world, That's he's telling you, he's go into north, east, yes. south and west. Yes. Go into all the world. Yes. And make disciples. Exactly. This is Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Verse 18 starts very specifically. And Jesus came, please understand, this is after he has resurrected, mm -hmm. he's about to exit yes. the earth. Yes. So he came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So before any sending, mm -hmm. we must know the source of the authority. Mm. So he says, listen guys, before I send you, I need to know where I'm coming from. So I'm telling you, go into all the world. Yes. But before you go, come Very back good. and understand yes. who is it that is sending you. Yes. And TCC notice that we've been talking about the source, talking exactly. about God, talking about understanding that your confidence in your sending yes. is in your knowledge of who have sent exactly. you. Who is it that has spoken to me? Yes. Who is he telling me to go? Because if he tells me go, he's already prepared that place. So there my confidence is in who sent you. Yes, and that is why verse 18 becomes crucial okay. to the rest of the story. Mm. When we talked about, when we spoke about grace in the past conversations, yes. every sent one carries grace. grace. It means every sent one carries a dimension of authority in heaven and on earth. Mm. Okay. So when Jesus says, all authority has been given, has been to, given me. to me. Yes, that's okay. why we always said that he called you to himself first mm. before he sent because he has all authority exactly yeah has been given to me then verse 19 says go therefore why because he already has that authority okay go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit mm. teaching them to observe all things that i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the age and that's how that chapter of matthew ends amen now, in other words, let it be so. It I is a subtle because matter. It's between verse 18 and 20, yes. there's so much content. Exactly. There's so much hidden in there. Yes. I think we need to just go in and break, break down some of the words. Very good. Yeah? Yes. The Bible starts by saying in yeah. verse 18, go. Yes. Into. Yes. Go. Go. Can you Motion. talk about that? Yes. You must go. Mm. This is very, so important. You must go. That's why we call them sent ones. Mm. Where did the term sent come from? From the action, go. go. Right? But it goes on and says, go means each one of us, once authority is given to you, yes. there is a ascending, a command that says, go. Yes. So I cannot be a sent one and there is no way I'm going. Mm. You cannot say you are the harvest. You're being activated to go, yes. but you have not identified not where you're going. Yes. And you can't just wake up and get out and just start walking. Exactly. For example, if you talk of Abraham saying, I, I, I've been told to get out of my father's house. Yes. Where are you going? I don't have a destination, yes. but I'm just going. Yes. Yet, you can see God told him, it's okay, get out. Very but good. where you are going, I will show you. Exactly. So even the harvest, when they're told, go, Jesus yes. has already given a destination. You can't just wake up and say, I am going, but you don't know where you're going. There you go. Go. So, arise. Arise, go. But then he says this is the operative word. Okay. In the going, the operative word is make disciples. Please explain that. <laughs> so we are going to make disciples. Mm. We are not going, listen guys, I grew up in the model that thought we were going to preach. In the model that thought we were going to, to do a nice meeting. Yes. And you know, we have gone, we've done a meeting, we've come back. He didn't say that. Mm. He said, go and make disciples. The first thing to notice is that the emphasis is on making make. disciples. So mm. if you're going, you must be clear. Remember, we've talked about the parameters. And we'll look at those parameters again shortly. Okay. But go and make disciples. So what does that even mean? All right? Okay. So we want to start by defining what a disciple is. Let's go back before we go on. Yes. The word make. Yes. The word make. To make. Does that connote already that the disciples do not exist? 
Yes. They are not there. Yes. You have to make. Exactly. Okay? Now, if you tell me to make, mm -hmm. I must have tools yes. of making. Yes. Because remember, the disciple is a person. I'm not going to make Very good. a thing. Yes. I'm going to make a people. Exactly. These people already exist. Yes. And they already exist with their own politics. Yes. They exist with their own culture. They yes. exist with their own economy. Yes. They exist with their own spirituality. Very good. Now, these people you're being sent to, to already exist. Yes. But you're being told to take the same people yes. and, and make. make them. Now, this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I grew up in the, in the in the thought that said a disciple is one who follows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now here's the problem. It sounds good in English, but it's wrong. Yeah. A disciple is one who has been made, who knows how to follow. Mm, mm, mm. So one who has yeah, been made. made, who now has a path and he knows how to. So follow. when we start saying that we are disciples of Christ, yes, we are simply talking. Yes. Question first would be: Have I allowed him to make exactly. me? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And when you have been made into a disciple, mm. it doesn't mean somebody is walking ahead and you're following them. Mm. That's not what masters taught their disciples. Mm -hmm. The masters taught their disciples their ways. Mm -hmm. When you saw the disciple, he was walking in the ways of his master. Mm. So when you make disciples, the end product is when you... Listen, making disciples' end product is not to make disciples. Mm. Is to make this person... And walk, walk away. In your ways. Yes, in fact, there are disciples because the function... Jesus gave us one aspect, for example. Yes. He said, by this shall men know you are my disciples. Mm. Not by how well you follow me. Mm. Or by how well you quote me. Mm. Or how many things you say you know about me. Yes. He said by your love, one for another. That's one of the measurements mm. of who are disciples. To show is. that you are a disciple. So if you're a Jesus. disciple, a disciple is a follower. Yes. One who learns how to walk in the ways exactly. of his master. Yeah, so it's, so so the correct rendering is a disciple is one who follows a pattern that he was trained and taught in. Mm. Mm. Not one who just follows a person. Mm. That's a principle. You, you walk in the ways of the principles of the one who taught you. So if you talk about disciples of Jesus, yes. they are walking in his principles exactly. and the lifestyle of the one who trained them. Very good. So you cannot find a disciple and say, this is Peter and John. Yes. When you find them, their lifestyle yes. is so different from that of Jesus. Yes. Meaning for me to follow someone or allow someone to make me into a disciple yes. i must have seen that his ways are superior exactly his ways exactly. are much superior than where i am absolutely i must desire something in him and that's why the disciples allowed jesus to make them yes so they are not called disciples because they are following jesus around okay they are called disciples because even when jesus wasn't there mm. they were still following the path mm. Mm. so we need to upgrade some things yes we need to upgrade that I do not testify of being a follower of Jesus. Okay. My life testifies, testifies of that's being powerful. a follower that's powerful. of Jesus. My lifestyle, people can see. Yes. And when you see, like when he said, that when people see your love for one another, not what you say. Not because, when they hear you telling oh, each other, I love you. Mm -mm. When they see. So love is seen. Thank you. Love is not spoken. Yes. Wow. That's a so if we say today we are disciples, TCC, yes. we are disciples of Christ. We say, you know what? We've allowed the word to make us. We've allowed the yes. word to form us on the inside. On the outside, it is seen in actions, there you go. not in words. Yes. So whatever is inside of you, the minute you open your mouth, then we know what is your makeup internally. Absolutely. Wow. So that tells you that the group Jesus was speaking to was not everybody who loved Jesus. Mm. Mm. This goal is not for everyone. Wow. It is for people who know how to make disciples. Okay. So now we are separating the labor and the harvest. Because okay. many of us think the Great Commission is for everybody. Mm -hmm. And we keep telling everybody, if you are a believer, why aren't you carrying out the Great Commission? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. You may be the one who has been commissioned to, to be made. Okay, wait. So when Jesus says go into all the world, yes. there's these people who have allowed themselves to be formed by the exactly. word. Exactly. Those people yes. could be forming, first of all, the people in their congregation, Thank you. people in their environment, yes. people in their surroundings, yes. before they even go anywhere. So exactly. the people who have been formed are believers already. That's it. But they have been, like, let me use the word transformed, from yes. believers to disciples. Exactly. Okay. That's the journey. 
All right. Yeah. So maybe you give us again. What so, is the definition of a disciple? <laughs> so a disciple <laughs> is one who has been trained. Notice the term. Okay. Trained. Not one who listens. One who has been trained by another mm -hmm. to live by values, mm -hmm. principles, and lifestyles of whatever they are being trained by the other. Mm -hmm. Listen, one of the best ways to explain disciples is the training of the SEAL teams and the Marines. Mm -hmm. By the time they are done with, they can be sent anywhere. Mm -hmm. And they will function at the optimum level because of their training. So let's go back to the seals because I think that's a powerful <laughs> way to look at it. Yes. When you're training a seal yes. and making them, yes. forming them, yes. it is with the intention of sending them. That's it. Okay? That's when it. you send them, you are sending to for them to go out and exactly. for you to see a result. Absolutely. Not that too, for them to go for a no. party. Okay? So and that is why if you follow the journey of training of seals. Not all mm -hmm. make it. Oh, yes. So this journey is not that easy. If you're designed for it now, we're using a secular picture mm -hmm. to show a spiritual principle. Yes. The spiritual principle is when you want to make it to scent level, there are so many journeys you will go through, mm. processes that nobody who you will eventually be sent to sees. We've talk, we spoke about that before. Yes. So you can see, if you watch the SEALs training, you'll see sometimes they give up. Sometimes they are tired. Mm. Sometimes they are stressed. Sometimes they just have to pick up again and pick. But when you see when they are finished. Mm -hmm. So the seals are being trained externally, we can see. Yes. They are being told to take these logs. Yes. They are running. They are in the mud and all that. Yes. Spiritually, our yes. training is internal. It's so you internal. can't go looking for the external. person God is training and saying, wait, well, let me look at these people. You can't see how see God it. externally what he's doing. No, it is internal. It's internal. But if you see a seal, yes. you will understand what we're talking about what? of internal exactly. training. Exactly. Where you're being trained to be firm, yes. where you're being trained to be strong, where you're being trained to be to persevere, yes. to have joy, exactly. to love, to you know, when you talk of the fruit of the spirit, yes, those things are, are a journey. They before don't you get there, because we pray, you don't love people because you like people. You're not patient with people because no. you're good. It's because there's been a journey you've gone through. You have overcome mm. your own reactions to those things. You are not. You have overcome offense. Mm. You've overcome all sorts of. You overcome betrayal. You've overcome many things. And these things will happen they if happen. you're on this journey. They happen. So the training, when you look at the seals and check the training, yes. see it as that's how Christians would go for training. But their training is internal. That's it. So you won't find us in a field somewhere, no. uh, running and doing all those things. But you know what? In your own moment, you who yes. is watching, yeah. you can tell there's a place where you've been to your field, yes. where you've been trained. But many times, like you said, many seals fall out. Yeah. And you know, sometimes if we try to borrow, like what I've just said, if yes. you now misunderstand me, mm. and try to borrow from the seals and bring it to your kingdom organization, it will fail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. Because the journeys that some of us have had in ministry, we know what works and what doesn't work. Mm. The idea that you can make people do difficult things and think that will change them. So you're making them do natural Clean the tasks yes. to form them internally. They are spirit man. You can't. No, you don't form the spirit man yes. with natural tasks. No. So me, making sure you're always cleaning the church, you're the one who's always carrying mm. equipment, that is not training. It's training nothing. I'm just making you subjugated and if I have power you will follow me it doesn't mean you've changed mm. but if you wake Choose. up for yourself mm -hmm. and pick up the equipment mm -hmm. if you wake up for yourself and clean it, nobody told you that is a disciple wow that's a difference and this person who wakes up to do something without being told yes it's because internally they are formed that's it and remember they're not formed according to the patterns of men no they are formed according to the patterns of the word that god sent to them yes therefore internally they have the makeup yes. of a son of god not exactly. a son of man yes therefore the son of god hears and says listen as long as i'm in this place i need to do this yes. now there are many people who would want to be told what to do there you that go. is the seal trade where you're being yes. trained externally come and do this yeah, yeah. come that's, and that's carry this kingdom, kingdom is kingdom. you make your choice and by the way since i'm using that metaphor okay when you choose to do those things like pick a or whatever do them when nobody sees mm, do it as unto the lord so that no one is going to benefit you nobody is going to praise you mm. nobody you know why you're doing it you're doing it for you not for anyone you're the one who's changing internally mm. 
It's got nothing. I think when you talk about congregations or communities coming together, people have to understand that where we are coming from, churches, we know it. We came into a facility and we waited for someone to tell us. Yes, yes there is where you must be grown internally yeah. so or, that also you have to be instructed because you don't know where things should be. You don't know, yes. Ah, yeah. But really, you've been in a place for 10 years. You've been in a place for five you years. Know how you are. know that these things are done. For example, if you're in a congregation and you walk into a church service every Sunday, you've never asked yourself who arranges those seats. You've never asked yourself this place is so clean. Who cleans? Those are external things. They won't take you to heaven, but they'll but make they'll you very build good. your discipleship internally in the earth for yourself. Yes. But those who are doing it because there's an overseer, mm. because pastor can see, mm. because it might get me a promotion because this is the pathway to be recognized. You've already missed. So the you're saying lesson. here that coming to a place of external activities, birthed out of internal growth, yes. should be about our legacy. So when you see where you are sent and say, This is where I am right now, yes. I can do something, remember and remember again the actual activities you're doing will not take you to heaven. They'll just make you a very good member. But what takes you to heaven and makes you uh, have influence is yes. internal. True. So don't do activities externally yes. for to be seen. No. Come to a place of saying there's a son of God. And I'm talking of inheritance of spiritual things. What should I do in the natural? Yep. When you gather together, you ask yourself, now that we are gathering, who checked? The lights are there, the water is there. Those things are just, let me use the word, common sense. You know the five senses? Those are just the common ones where you say, let me do this. But it's also a picture of maturity. And it's that also you're a thinking beyond. of learning to serve others. Mm, powerful. Learn to serve servant of all. Yes, if, if I can't serve you in the natural, how can I serve you in the spiritual? Mm, mm. So the disciple we are talking about, yes. the making is an internal activity. Exactly. External activities like we used the seals are good. Yes. But my friend, go for internal even as you're doing the external. And the good thing is that today we'll even discuss how that making works. Yes. So we've, we've, we've deliberately stayed at the individual level. Yes. Because that's the principle where we go because it's individuals who run everything even systems, even nations that are run by individuals. Yes. So there's that reality. But it's interesting at the level at which Jesus was having this conversation. Mm. He said, go and make okay. disciples. Can we also agree that making is a process? It doesn't happen overnight. Yes. But, but the way we have done church for years, and that's why we don't have probably the impact we should have, or ministry, or calling for years, is we are like people who switch over an oven but never cook. Mm. So we go for an overnight meeting. We get people saved at a crusade, and that's it. So we are not making disciples. We are introducing people to the potential mm. of being a disciple. Yes. And we leave that. So getting people born again is the beginning of it's this journey point. called yes. make. Yes. Because you can't make someone who does not yes. know Jesus, who has yes. not said, yes, I want to be in this kingdom. Yeah. So the person says, yes, I want to be in this kingdom. I want to be in this journey. I want to be a disciple. Yes. So the starting point is where many people get born again. Exactly. But once they get born again, many people leave them there. Yeah. Now, you see, so far, interesting, we're discussing a disciple. We're not discussing the disciples Jesus was sending. And I want to show you what I mean by that. Okay. Remember the term disciple did not start with Jesus. Hmm. Everybody had disciples. Any master, any leader, any great teacher, any great spiritual teacher had disciples. So that is a principle. So far, we're discussing the disciples of a church, disciples of a ministry, disciples, which is important. And it's good. You need to learn to be a disciple at that level. Yes. Before you can understand how to make disciples at the sent level. Hmm. So let's not say there's a dichotomy between the two. Yes. We just got, we came to the microcosm mm. to bring it to the individual level for you to understand this concept. Yes. Because when we want to expand it now, you'll see what Jesus was really saying. Let's talk about that because when you talk yes. about let us make disciples, yes. disciples of who? Uh -huh. I think that would be a good question. It's interesting. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. Mm. He says, make disciples of nations. Mm. My goodness, that's a whole different ballgame. You see, the sad thing currently, many of us, because of our nurturing and culturing, whenever we say we are going to the nations, or we are going, we think maps. Mm -hmm. We think uh, geopolitical borders. Geopolitical borders were created through wars, mm. were created through 
conquering, yes. was created through uh, colonization. God was not involved in those borders. Mm. Men were. Men wanted to expand their land and they took other people's land. Through war. So many people have thought when Jesus said go into all the world, they use their geopolitical exactly. map. Exactly. When he says go and make disciples of the nations, mm. we think, for example, if you ask me, where am I from? I'll tell you the nation of Kenya. Okay. But that's not what the old term is. The map we should be having in mind is not the geopolitical map. Okay. Like you've, you've intimated. The geopolitical map was created through wars. It was created through taking over of territories. Mm -hmm. It was taking or uh, fighting over uh, resources. Yes. It was created by colonization. Mm. There are so many reasons that created those maps of what today we call countries. Okay. Right? But the apostolic map is based on an entirely different model. You are sent to people groups. Now, the best way, and we don't want to go into the wider scope, let's bring it to our context. All Remember, right, all right. within this context of conversation, ours stays in the marketplace. Yes. So let's bring it to the context. In this context, this map would be covering, for example, sports as, mm -hmm. a, as, as, as a nation. Yes. All right? Okay. Even within, uh, or, or sports, nations, plural. Mm -hmm. Because there could be the soccer nation. Yes. There could be, and they all have world governing bodies. Oh, yes. Right? They have economic structures. Yes. They have got governing and political structures. Mm, they have, they have a got culture. A culture of mm -hmm. how they operate. Yes. They have got their beliefs mm. and systems. Yes. So that would be ascending to one of those nations. So when Jesus says, go ye into all the world, the world here, one of the worlds is talking about his sports. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yes, it could be music. Yes. It could be politics. Mm. It could be so many other things. Mm. Now the principle would be this that a sent one would have to have a level of insight and knowledge in those areas to begin with. Okay. Then they would activate people who would go and function in those places to do what? To transform those places into kingdom. Mm. And that's why we started by saying yes. that pray to the Lord of the harvest Yes. For the workers. That's it. If the harvest was so simple to handle, why no. would you pray for workers? Exactly. So you're saying that if a worker is sent, a laborer here, sent to the sports world, exactly. and he understands his sending, yes. you will not find him in the political world. No, you wouldn't. You know where you are sent. You would be, you, you would be competent. Mm. You would know the values, the systems. The, of where you are yeah, sent. To, 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 use, to use a biblical example, okay. let's take Daniel. When Daniel and the other Hebrew boys were brought into Babylon, they had to learn this. He said, take these boys and make them disciples. Mm. Teach them, teach them, teach, teach them. them, teach them, teach them. The language, the culture, the function, how to function, how to stand in the palace, how to, all that, so that they can be functional. Yes. That was the principle behind it. Mm -hmm. So this is just the same tone and connection. That's why Daniel and his uh, and his friends were smart enough not to be discipled in the ways of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Yet they understood that they were sent into Babylon. Oh yes. So they knew how to learn the language, how to learn the structure, how to learn the operations, so that they could still transform it. And did they? Yes. A day came when there's a when there's a Nebuchadnezzar who said, "No God to be worshipped, mm -hmm. but the God of Daniel." And laws were passed. That is the ultimate. Listen, if you're a Daniel, your ultimate sending is to call Nebuchadnezzar to acknowledge you are God and to change the rules mm. to, to follow up with the rules of where you've come from. So if we look at Daniel as an example, yes. do we see him making disciples where he is? Yes, he is, because when laws are passed that agree with the laws he has put in place, now the order coming from the king means everybody must follow that format. Mm. And following that format is the principle of making disciples of nations. nations that yes. entire nation for a season mm. had to comply with heaven. Okay. That's a principle. Yeah. Now, if you understand that concept, then you'll understand that when he says that we are supposed to make disciples of all nations, that means there are specific laborers oh, yes. and different types of harvest. So that's okay, why... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> they are specific? Laborers okay. and different types of harvest. Not the same harvest. Yes. Different types of harvest. Yes. That's powerful. Very crucial. Okay. And that's why if you've been following this series, we insist that you be sure that you're connected to the grace that has to do with your type of harvest. Mm. And how do you know that? You know that because to begin with, 
if you are configured by God to function in a particular environment, mm. there must be a laborer who can activate that fullness in you so that you can function properly in that place. Mm. That has always been the model. As much as Daniel was in Babylon, Daniel had one who was his sent one called Jeremiah. Yes. And he always referred to the prophetic word of Jeremiah. Mm. And, what, and that shaped the decisions he made. That shaped how he functioned. That shaped how they operated. Even his prayer was Everything. shaped by the books of Jeremiah. I Everything. read the books and I knew what you're supposed to be doing. Yet there were more prophets before. Exactly. In the same time of Jeremiah, yes. there were other prophets. That's but it. he was called to the books of Jeremiah and for his activity his in Babylon. Simple. That is good. Esther may have done great, but without a Mordecai. Oh, yes. This is what you must understand about every single place. Daniel was, a, David was amazing, but without a Nathan. Mm. This is just how these models work. There's always the sent one, and there's always the harvest, yes. and the functionality of the harvest. Is it okay to say we need to look at how to make, how to make disciples yes. of nations? So, because so, when you talk of disciples of nations, you've just made it so clear that here we're not talking about church. Yes. We've already gone outside of the four walls. There you go. And when we talk about the four walls, remember what we said. Four is always a picture of the world. Yes. Okay? So we've broken the walls that has captured what you'd call the world into that, this place. That, that has kept the world out, out and kept the harvest in. So the, the, the four walls of the church yes. has captured the harvest yes. and kept the world out. out. Now we are breaking the four walls. So that the harvest can hmm. go and affect the nations. How do we make disciples of nations? That's our question. Well, why we love this whole passage, why I call it the template, is that yeah. everything we are discussing is answered within the same passage. Mm. Jesus didn't leave us confused yes. about this statement. So how do we make disciples? So we've now understand mm. that so far we've agreed we go yes. to make disciples. Mm. Disciples of what? Of oh. nations. But how do you do that? Well, the first thing we see Jesus saying is baptize them. Yes. We see the scripture talking about ba make disciples. We see baptize them. Yes. Now what is to baptize nations? Because yes. you said here a nation is a people group. Exactly. We are taking this, the example of the sports world. Yes. Here you are sent into the sports world. Mm -hmm. How are you to baptize yes. your people in that place? All right. What is beautiful about the, the, the context of this is that it raises so many interesting conversations mm -hmm. because in the, in the basic understanding that we all have had the word baptize, you see this is how, okay, let me tell you how confirmation bias works. If you've had something, a term used in a particular way, when you hear it, you assume automatically mm -hmm. it's being used in that way. Yes. Because you've seen baptizing in the Bible during the days of John the Baptist, your natural behavior is to imagine that what's going to happen here, you are going to use the same term. Now that's a surprise. I think it's because when you met the word baptize, with John in the New Testament, yes. it actually was really rubbed on us that you must be immersed in water. That's it. And if you're not, you and heaven might not really have a close relationship. That's an issue. But the question now arises, if the baptism Jesus meant was the one of dipping and immersing people in water, yes. we never saw him baptize his disciples. That's a problem. Now. The word baptizo is not limited to dipping or putting in water. Okay. Actually, it is, think of it this way. Me and you, the word baptizo to us is a biblical word. Yes. To the Greek, this word is a word. Meaning? Now, they're going to see why that matters. Yes. Because if we think it in our language, we, we, we close it down to one thing. Go in the water, put you out and bring you out. Yes. When you talk to the Greek about baptizo, what you're saying to him is, take a material and dip it until it takes on the nature of what you dipped it in. Which simply means dyeing a cloth. You've dipped it, you've taken a white cloth yes. into blue dye. There you go. When you dip yes. the white cloth, cloth, it will take the nature of the dye by the time you remove it. Now that has been baptized. This white cloth has been baptized. It is now a blue cloth. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So you're saying when you take the white cloth, yes. it has a nature. Yes. It has a character. Yes. It has a When weight. you describe it, you always call it white. So now you're taking that white Thank and you. changing its nature by immersing exactly. it into the dye yes. until it takes the nature now of Thank the dye. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to Jesus <laughs> he and said, telling go us to go and baptize and people. And baptize the nations. <laughs> now here's the problem. 
If he just left it that way, our argument would remain with water. But it is sad that he did not leave it at water. He was even specific on how we are supposed to baptize. Okay. So to, 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 the, to the Greek mind, baptizing something is metaphorically transforming it by immersing it in an experience, mm. in an environment, in a solution, in anything, until it becomes or it draws or it functions like the environment it was placed in. Yes. Even when water is not involved. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> we only know baptizo or baptize with water. Water must be around. Yeah, water must be there. Now yeah. you're saying even in the absence of water, you can baptize a thing or a person Thank you. into something else. Exactly. The term baptize is bigger than putting in water. TCC, we have to get this because <laughs> we are not saying if you want to be baptized, come, I'll baptize you in a pool somewhere. It's okay. No. But my friend, baptism go, goes beyond. Yes. You've been dipped in water. Yes. You are dry. You come yes. out wet. Actually, water baptism is the form not mm. the function. Mm. Mm. It's a picture pointing into something else. Okay, wait. <laughs> so when you are being baptized, it's like a picture of, do you see how you are dry? Yes. You went in and became wet. Yes. You took the nature of the water where yes. you were. You came out, now you are wet. Exactly. That's a picture of how you are to be immersed. Exactly. So we have taken the his form. Into nature and character. So we've taken the form and we've gotten rid of the function. Mm. Okay. So people get baptized in water, but they don't change. But there's no change. You'd rather be changed and not be baptized. Okay, wait. Go back to that again, please. <laughs> you see, the putting in water, we do it. If you ask us, we will baptize you. Mm. But I will explain to you that you go in dry, you come out wet. It's like a bookmark. Mm. A bookmark that I'm choosing a journey. When I'm through with this journey, I will be somebody else. Mm. That's the picture. It's just the picture. So if you tell me I was baptized, I was immersed yes. in water. Yes. No, I was, is that, that's not immersing, that is dipped. Yes, you're dipped water. in water. Because immersing If you're immersed, you'd have transformed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was yes. dipped in water. Yes. When I came out, yes. I should have gone home to meditate on what just happened. What is the picture What is of the that? picture there? What is that reminding me So you are telling me the word of God. I can be immersed into Thank that you. word because Jesus says, okay, we'll go into that now, now, that teach them all the things. Yes. So that teaching is supposed to be exactly like what happened to Good. me in the water. Remember, we're talking about making. Okay. And we're asking, how do you make? Nations, nations into disciples. disciples. Yes. He says by baptizing. Mm. So this is giving mm. us the, the mm. clue, the pattern. Okay. But baptizing in what? Okay. This is what he told us. Mm. Baptize them in the name, not in water. John the Baptist baptized them in the water, but he said, I am preparing the way for one to come. Yes. And John the Baptist always remembered yes. to, to add, he the one greater. who is coming is greater. Simple. So, if we say that John baptized in water, and yes. then there's another one who is coming. Yes. But he gives you an instruction, baptize in the name. And what I love about this scripture is that the term name here is singular and not mm -hmm. plural. Baptize in the name, singular, of the Father, Father and of the Son and of the... It is actually separated, but it is one. Mm. That's interesting. What is it to be baptized in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit? Not in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and... No, no, no. In the name. Okay. Scripture is interesting. Now, the term name used here has to be understood. It signifies operating under the authority and by the command of another. Hmm. In other words, when I come in the name, I come in the authority... But I also come under the command of the same person. Mm. So you can't yes. just say I have the authority, no. but I've left the, the, command. the part of the command yes. of another. I don't yes. follow his command yes. anymore. He gives me authority and I go around exactly. it and I'm over with him. Exactly. Mm. So the, the policeman can exercise authority, but within authority. Mm. Mm. He cannot violate the source that gives him authority. He is limited to the level of authority. Yes. That's why Jesus began by saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. 
So how is that authority then delegated? Baptize them in the name. That's how you make them disciples. What is baptizing in the name? Okay. All right. It's a good question. I think the big question. <laughs> yes. Because even when you tell me baptize in the name, at least I know how to baptize in water. In the name. Because yes. this name, can we also go back to this name is not tangible. Yep. It's not material. Yep. So the name is a spiritual reality. Okay. Now we're going to go into that. This is what we did. And, and when I say we, I talk about the church and the journey of the church of what we did. Yes. We baptized in water and quoted the name. Mm. I baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's not what he said. Mm. He said baptize the nations in the name. So we assume automatically baptizes water. Okay. The word baptize does mm. not mean immerse in water. The word baptize means change the nature. Let's get those words clear. Immersed in anything. Listen, whatever you are immersed in changes your nature. So if you're immersed with fools, mm, you, you have been baptized. That's why. When we meet you, you behave like them. Okay, stop. Immersed here, you've been immersed into the nature and the character of the fools. Thank you. You've taken on the nature of another. You that have was not been you. Baptized. And that's why you're told, okay, stop. Who are you hanging around? They will baptize you yes. in their name, in their ways. Oh, Lord. And that is why <laughs> the, the baptism <laughs> of the Holy Spirit is being imbued with the nature of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It is not being able to speak in tongues. Okay. Speaking in tongues is an evidence that you've been imbued. Slowly. Now, in the name. When you say in the name in the Bible, it always talks about, I have come, I carry authority. The authority I carry is not mine. Mm. It's given by another who is superior to where I have come to. Mm. And because of that authority, I can execute what is in the mind of the one who sent me. Okay. So, so go back now. Here yes. I am. I've yes. been sent to the sports world. Yes. I'm with this coach. Yes. Now tell me using that statement how to baptize him. Yes. In the so, name. So, how baptizing in the name, to explain how to baptize in the name, I will go to the next verse, verse okay. 20, because okay. this scripture is not confused. Mm -mm. Actually, it's opening up so well. So he said, baptize in the name, how do you do it? Mm. Teaching them to observe all mm. the things that I have commanded you. Finally, TCC, <laughs> I think now we don't have to explain. I'm sure it has landed. Baptize? Yes. Baptize them in, in the, the name, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them. That teaching is mm -hmm. how you are to baptize. Mm -hmm. So, when you tell me that teaching is the baptism we are talking about, or Jesus was talking about, mm. the teaching is where you're being immersed. There you go. So, when you look at yourself being baptized in the water, yes. that picture was bringing you to this there place. There you go. Where we say, listen, when we are teaching, when you walk into any teaching sessions, you're being immersed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. TCC, we have been baptizing you for five years. <laughs> I hope Point something is happening. Online five, two offline. So, wow. seven now. We wow. hope that character, so baptizing in the name so that we, you can go out, you, mm. in the name of your Father. I'm a son of God. Yes, yes. In the name of the Son, I have an instruction. In the name of the Spirit, I have power <laughs> to carry Please out. Please go back again. Now today we want to understand <laughs> baptism because I think most of the people watching us, I believe you're baptized in water. How many are baptized in the name? That's now it. let's see how to be baptized in the name because yes. that should be our command. Yes. So that by the time you're going to the market space, exactly. you do not go to baptize people in the name and you're not baptized. Exactly. Now do you realize kingdom things do not uh, detach from every trade teaching. They're One connected. Day, everything is connected. Yes. Because if you tell me to go and, and baptize the nations, the yes. world, let's go to the world and baptize nations, yes. I have to be baptized. Exactly. Now You must be, you must. Now, going back again. Yes. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send for workers 
Because the harvest is ready. Ready for go. what? Ready to be immersed. To be immersed. And once they are immersed, each of them knows I am taking my place in the market space. And here comes an interesting wow. twist to this particular verse. Teaching them to observe all the things that I have. Commanded you. Commanded who? You. So there's a journey of what was commanded to you. you? Which are the things you will teach them to observe? <laughs> now I understand that when we say the workers, the laborers must be sent, each of them will come and they'll go with ascending yes. to a specific harvest. Commanded? Yes. In this specific harvest, there is what you will command them. Yes. That command is the teaching of this harvest there you go. into the world. Which means hmm. that every sent one must be able to track back the commands of Jesus. Teaching them to observe all the things that I have Taught you. commanded you. Mm -hmm. So there's something the Lord has commanded sent ones. Yes. Which they carry with them. Mm -hmm. Which they teach you to observe. Okay. And in that teaching you, as you observe, you get baptized. Mm -hmm. Now, before I finish this conversation, mm. can we go back to the scripture again? Yes. Where we say, fine. Jesus said, go into all the world. Yes. And like... Bring now, you see we've been breaking each word, breaking each word, breaking. Now bring all this together, yes. like when Jesus said, go ye into all the world. Okay. Tell us briefly. All right. Remember where it starts? All authority has been given to me in heaven you know. and on earth. Then he says, go and make disciples. So the, uh, this is the principle. Go and make disciples. disciples. Of what? Of nations. How? Baptizing them. In which way? In the name of the Father, the in Son. Son, and the Holy Spirit. By teaching, teaching them. them all the things that he has commanded you. Mm. When that happens, there's a promise he now gives mm. us. Mm. He says, mm. and lo, I am with you always, <laughs> even to the end of the age. Now, here is another issue. Good. I am with you always. always. Meaning, if you operate like that, I am with you. Mm. Not I will be with you. I am with you. So every statement always. you make, every decree, the authority, and why is he with you? Who carries all authority in heaven and on earth? Jesus. Which means which door can turn him down? Hmm. Which opportunity can stop him? Which so nation? He, this is what you're saying about the market space, you will thrive. Now, do you understand in the thriving? You cannot thrive without the word. Jesus is the word. Mm -hmm. This word has sent you. Yes. If you have your word and you do not go and say, by the way, now that I'm here and I'm already in the valley, here I am. I'm resting here. Mm -hmm. No, there's a word inside of you telling you you're not over yet. Can we continue? Let's do what we need to do. As you're doing that, you thrive because you're under authority. Exactly. And you know that you're under the command of he who sent you. Yes. You have authority. And then he says something, even to the end of the age, age. not the world. Mm. Age. Age means a particular kairos in God, okay. a particular season, an era in the world. Uh, like like we, we can say we've come out of the computer age. Okay. We're in the innovation age. Mm. We came out of the agricultural age. So in each age there are assemblies. There's something called the AI age. Which we are entering now. <laughs> Which so the law is with me mm. till the end mm. of this mm. age. So, you are here. Now, you realize when we say uh, the powerful scripture from the book of Esther, yes. you are here for such a time as yes. this. Now, look at that time as this being your age. This is the era you're in. Yes. You are here because you are sent. But because you are sent, you have authority and you're under the command of he who sent you. you so you're looking at your life and saying, listen, I can never fail. Why? Because Jesus has promised me I will be with you always up to the end of the age. The age that you've been sent, there's something called I will be with you. And you see that with Moses. Yes. Moses from yeah. the burning bush, even oh, before, Lord. but from the burning bush, when we hear him being told, go and tell Pharaoh, I'm sending you, yes. and I will be with I you. I will be with you. But we see God with him, and we see True. manifestation, manifestation. So TCC, it is time for manifestation. Yes. It is time to see things happen in your life. Because if you say he is with me, and you know why? The being with you is not that, wait, I have to be immersed. No, you started the journey. Go. It it must is continuous. Mm. Let me say mm. for every mm. age, that's why we call it a proceeding word. Yes. There's every oh. age. There's a place you're a master as a disciple. It's an ongoing task. The principle is this. For every assignment, there's a requirement of an immersion. That's all. Yes. 
for every assignment. Mm -hmm. When you get a listen, Jesus had a certain assignment coming up. He got baptized and we say the Holy Spirit came upon him. Yes. So the focus was not the water of John. Mm. The focus was the Holy Spirit coming upon him. Yes. And what was that for? To go deal with the devil in the wilderness. He returns after that in the power of the Spirit. Yes. He says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Again. And then he defines. In other words, there are ages. Mm. There are errors. That's why we continue in connection. Yes. We continue being baptized. Yes. Even we continuously are being baptized. Mm. Which means there are new dimensions of God we are getting into new insights, new knowledge for every error. And what is the ultimate? Until, as Habakkuk said mm -hmm. in Habakkuk 2.14, for the earth, not the heavens, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Mm -hmm. The earth. Now, let me ask you, does earth need knowledge? In our mind, this word earth means Creation. No, no, no. Creation already is filled with the knowledge of the glory of mm. God. It's already operational. Yeah. It is the nations. Mm. It is the operations. It is the functionality. Everything, everywhere. If you want another scripture that gives us that reality is Revelation 11.15. Mm. Where they say that, that there was a trumpeting sound and an angel declared, the kingdoms of this world mm -hmm, my favorite. have become. <laughs> That's the end point. Yes. The kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. Wait. Who is our Lord and who is his Christ? Hmm. Sometimes we just quote scriptures. Our Lord is Jesus. Who is his Christ? You. The body of Christ. The kingdoms of the world, world have become? The kingdoms of our Lord and, and of his Christ. his Christ. And he shall reign forever mm -hmm. and ever. So there is Christ and his Christ. Yes. There is Jesus Christ yes. and the body of Christ. Yes. And these kingdoms have become, the kingdom. they have been baptized, they yes. have turned, they have become. Guys, that's powerful. And we are saying that me, I must ask myself, where am I sent? Yeah. Because where I'm sent, I have a teaching that I am supposed to teach. And you teach, if need be, without words. But that's where we are going. To the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Your closing thoughts on this? My closing thoughts is, guys, we've been baptized. Oh, yes. We've been journeying. It's time now for the kingdoms of this world to become. How do they become? By us ruling them. Going in, and how do we rule them? Not with our power. Mm -hmm. We come in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. There are nations, as Jesus said, that shall not see peace until, until they say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That is us. Hmm. So we are talking about being baptized. Many of you watching us today have been baptized in water. Today may be that day when you realize that there's another journey called being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you're baptized this way through the teaching, the word, the instructions that come to shape you internally so that when you go to your market space, you can thrive and you will make disciples of nations where you're sent. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on Business Unusual with the Cyrus community. As we explored today, being sent is about more than just going. It's about making disciples in every nation with the Great Commission as our guide. We delved into Jesus' directive to immerse people in His teachings, acting under His authority, and transforming nations one life at a time. Remember, the mission isn't limited to geopolitical borders, but extends to every people group impacting politics, economy, culture, and spirituality. As we continue to spread the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, we are assured of His promise. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Stay tuned for the next conversation, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights on living out your purpose in the marketplace. See you on the next mountain.